All right, here it is. I have been waiting for this exact box to show up at my doorstep uh, ever since I saw the release video for the CDJ2000 Nexus 2. Anybody who knows me personally or has been subscribed to me on YouTube knows I'm a little bit of a Pioneer fanboy. So in this video, I'm going to be unboxing and giving you my first impressions of the brand new CDJ2000 Nexus 2. And once again, link down below in the description of this video uh, if you're interested in purchasing any of the things that you see on my channel. So without further ado, let's break the seal. That new Pioneer smell fresh off the boat from Japan. All right, so here once again, we have our medium gray IEC to Edison power cable, classic. And on the other side, we have a packet uh, full of cables and a manual, it seems. So let's open this up. We have our Cat5, our ethernet cable for linking the CDJs in the ProDJ link. Um, Still sending RCAs, so I wish they threw in uh, digital cables instead because I think that's a far superior um, way of hooking everything together. And of course our paperwork. This little thing has nothing on it and this is again the Kubo advertisement. So excited about Kubo. I can't wait for it to take off. And the moment we've all been waiting for the actual unit itself. All right, here we have it. I can see some play and cue buttons peeking through here. I think this is a jog wheel of some sort. So without further ado, get rid of our tape. It's like unwrapping a present to myself that cost way too much. All right, here it is. And wow, um, straight away, it is a lot, just lifting it, it's a lot heavier than the, the regular 2000 Nexus or even the predecessors before that, the 2000 and the 1000 MK3s. This has a, it seems, yeah, it's a metal bottom. Um, previously on other CDJs, they had just had small little section that was metal, but it feels like this whole chassis, wow, it is a lot heavier. I'm not sure if that's due to the components inside or if they just uh, responding to feedback, people like me who uh, have no life and complain on the forums about every little thing, uh, maybe that's a response to that, but this is definitely a lot heavier. And you can see we have our new branding, Pioneer DJ, as opposed to just Pioneer. And it's also a little, a nice little touch that they have uh, changed the color of the feet here. I still wish they actually rotated so that you could, uh, you know, level it a little bit more because sometimes I have a, I have a couple of CDJs that are just slightly not level and it, it's so annoying. So I wish, you know, that was, <laughs> that was another thing that was included, but apparently not in this iteration. We do still have a CD drive, but this is probably going to be the last generation with one of those if I were to place a bet. And of course, the big news on this particular release, the brand new touchscreen, uh, high resolution waveforms, full color waveforms, that's going to be uh, the biggest uh, improvement you're going to see between this and the previous models. And one other exciting thing that, well, I'm particularly excited about, and a lot of other of my DJ friends who are do performance style mixing and they don't, you know, they have really, really short attention spans like me, so they, they like to jump in between tracks and between different parts in the same track. We have four hot cues and two banks of hot cues, giving us a total of eight. So you can only access directly four at a time, but then you can switch between which bank you want, A through D or E through H. And we have this cool uh, silver ring around the platter. And the whole thing looks, you know, a lot more, it just does, it looks more professional. I'm not particularly fond of uh, really shiny products, especially when you're in a professional environment. So this, uh, this is like the exact color scheme that I want. It's that flat black with uh, accents in all the right places, in my opinion. 
and we're actually running version 1.01 .01, and this startup is a whole lot faster than any of the previous CDJs. This is a big boot time improvement just from what I've seen right off the get-go and the screen is so much more high resolution. You can just tell immediately that everything is a lot more granular and high definition. But I don't want to upgrade the firmware just yet because I'm going to show you how to do that in a video when you first get your pair of CDJs. So let's go ahead and plug in our flash drive. And one thing I've noticed straight away is this USB cover flap, um, that's probably going to break off pretty easily in the future um, if I start renting these out. But for now, it's a really cool little thing that just flips up and um, there's no longer a stupid flap that's hanging there. So we've got our flash drive loaded. Let's go ahead and do USB and load our settings. And let's go ahead and change our waveform color to RGB. Oh, but I've already done that in record box because I planned ahead. So here we have our full color waveform that everyone's been waiting for. Um, and it's really nice to just be able to tap on the track and see in advance uh, how everything looks. This is such a great feature. So right now I'm actually using the needle countdown feature, which is different than the, the needle, uh, needle search feature. So if you hold down the platter, then it turns into needle search and your cursor or where you're putting your finger on will, that'll change the playback to that location. But if you're playing back and you just wanna see what a different part of the track looks like, um, you don't press pause and then, uh, yeah, you just, you press wherever you want to look on the small waveform and it'll, it'll give you a little preview of what's coming up or what you already passed. One thing I was uh, personally concerned about when I saw that these players were being developed, um, was that I didn't want everything to be moved onto the touch screen. The touch screen is a cool addition. Do not get me wrong, but there's just nothing as good as having that tactile feedback of the physical buttons. And I, I personally love having the buttons and having everything on the touch screen as well. It's a perfect combination in my opinion. Another big thing that they changed that I think is a huge improvement is they have made the hot cues live recording. So you no longer have to press a record button to enable the record mode. Uh, it just, if it's blank, it's already listening for you to input where you want to set a point and then you can instantly play it back. This is just like how Serato does it. I believe it's how Tracker does it as well. It's just such a smarter way to do it. And then you can obviously go ahead and uh, delete as well. And that was another big thing. This is the first player that has allowed you to actually delete hot cues on the player itself. Uh, every other time you'd have to go back in record box if you misplaced a cue or just re-record a new cue on top of it. One of the biggest features I can see that I'm going to be using a lot straight away is this new revised encoder browsing section. Whereas previously you just had the back button and the tag button, you now have a track filter button, an edit button, and this shortcut button, which just playing straight away with it has been totally awesome. You can change the phase meter type, you can change whether or not your auto cues uh, or your hot cues will auto load or if they'll follow what you have on your settings per track because you can change in record box per track whether you want it to auto load the hot cues or not. Uh, this is useful in a ton of different scenarios which I'll go to go more in depth to later if you want to subscribe. I'll show you more about that. So this shortcut screen is a really big improvement and it allows you to instantly change uh, the most common settings. The thing that I will be playing around with most is the quantized beat value uh, because it was really, it was cool, like quantize in the original Nexus was cool because it allowed you to snap all of your loops and all of your hot cues to uh, the quantized beat grid every beat. So you'd have four in a bar, right? So you have every beat you could snap to that grid. But now it allows you to uh, improve your performance by being able to be more granular with how quickly you can hit hot cues. So now that my quantize value is changed to one quarter, if I turn on quantize and, oh wow, it actually shows you uh, that it is one quarter value. Um, as long as quantize is on, my hot cues will only trigger every quarter beat. It won't actually trigger faster than that. Or half beat, or three quarter beat, 
for every beat. This depends, you have to be really kind of, uh, you have to be more purposeful and you have to be a lot more practiced if you're going to be using the lower, uh, the lower level of quantized values like quarter. I would probably not even go lower than a quarter. I would probably stick around half, quarter maybe, and then hardly ever eighth. But once again, make sure you stay subscribed because in this video, I'm just gonna be showing you these features and in future videos, I'm gonna be doing a whole series about using every single feature on this player. So make sure you are subscribed and stay tuned. Pioneers also brought back a couple of features that people really wanted like this eight beat loop if you just hold down the four beat loop button for a little bit longer. And if you notice on here, there is a little bit of Morse code um, encoding going on here. So everything that's labeled, uh, that every button that has a dual purpose, like for example, the four beat slash eight beat button, if it has uh, stenciling around it where it has a dot first and then a dash after it, the dot indicates what happens when you just click the button and the dash indicates what happens when you hold it down for one second. And this is true of pretty much all Pioneer products. So if you've ever wondered what that is, that's what it is. And I don't really think this feature is super necessary since I have slip mode on almost always, unless I'm doing like some tone play stuff or whatever, but they've included this, uh, it's now a dual direction reverse and forward button. So normally you just have the two positions reverse and it locks into reverse or forward um, as you would expect on any normal player. But they've added this toggle switch. Uh, actually, it's not really a toggle switch. It's like a sprung toggle switch where it only activates as long as you have it held down. Uh, and just from playing around with it a little bit here, I've noticed that if you go into slip reverse and then hit a hot cue, it actually takes you out of reverse mode unlike if you have reverse mode on normally and hit the hot cue. And here finally I have lined up all three brothers of the CDJ 2000 range. We have the classic ultimate CDJ 2000 on the left here. In the middle we have the brand new CDJ 2000 Nexus 2 and on the far right the CDJ 2000 Nexus. So as you can see, in some ways, the 2000 Nexus stands out a little bit more than the 2000 Nexus 2. And that's not necessarily a bad thing like I was talking about earlier. But anyways, I am really itching to get playing around with the brand new CDJ 2000 Nexus 2. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a great reliable player as the other ones have been. And hopefully there aren't any bugs, uh, software bugs, as there were in the original 2000 Nexus when it was first released. But as they say, there's only one way to find out, and I am about to spend about six hours straight playing around with my new toys. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I'll be able to get some more videos up very shortly, including a full tutorial series on both the new CDJ2000 Nexus 2 and the DJM900 Nexus 2. So make sure you are subscribed and stick around for those. And once again, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to click on the annotation on the screen to check out my unboxing of the DJM 900 Nexus 2. And don't forget, you can find all my social media links down in the description below, and I really hope to hear from you.